Outside of an elite golf event, you will never, ever see this many golf carts gathered for any reason outside of baseball's best amateur gathering in the world. Hi there folks, Danny and Darren, glad to have you back in Jupiter, Florida. This is the 21st annual Perfect Game Worldwood Bat Association World Championship. Danny, I think what makes this event fun is its history while we look at the future. You're thinking about more than 800 Major League alum that have come here, more than 5,000 players that have left here and later been drafted. It's got such a rich history. It's its own animal though. Mm -hmm. I mean, with the golf carts, with the busyness, with the scouting, it's like a baseball convention where everyone comes together to watch these talented young 20s, 21s, and 22s play. I think Jupiter is like a family reunion, right? Catching up with friends, old teammates, but I bet your family has never seen competition <laughs> like this, right? There's no Monopoly games that have this much heart. Guys are topping out at 98 miles per hour. Balls are leaving the yard, and you know every single guy here is playing their heart out to be a World Wood Bat champ. Yeah, world's a key word. We'll have stories from players from all over the world. We'll have players from all over this continental United States that have traveled here. The 98 gentleman she spoke of, we'll tell you his story. It's a story of redemption that, quite frankly, I'm thrilled to tell. Hang on to the end of this clip, and you'll enjoy seeing that. But we're going to start with a man that they appropriately call the resume, because not only is his resume outstanding in the classroom, he's a Duke commit, but he's one of the most talented, tallest, future major leaguers in all the United States. His name is Jordan Walker. We're going to get to know him. I'm Jordan Walker. We're in Jupiter, Florida, home of the World Wooded Bat Championship by PG. Lead on three, one, two, three. Lead. It always feels great on the first day. The field looks nice. Um, I always just love playing against people who are great as well. It always helps me be better. Good throw. Hit four, hit four, hit four. I'm most proud of my hitting. I feel like I've come a long way. Um, just going opposite field and up the middle, I've started to kind of get a rhythm to my swing. Let's see. Three, three, three. That a baby. There's like 20 fields, about 80 to 100 teams. This turn, we're playing a game a day, and then they have the pitchers always painting corners. They don't really miss that much. Hitters always hitting the ball, so it's kind of like a, the closest you can get to college baseball at this tournament. So yeah, it's pretty good. Good. We don't get that second one. We don't care. We want that first one. Dude, are you still sore from last weekend? He told me I was about to pitch this weekend. When you're down here, around all these scouts, make sure you're organized how we're doing things. Oh, yeah, there's like a thousand scouts here, just by the way. There's a thousand scouts here. At every game, everybody's always watching. The favorite part about playing baseball is definitely meeting new people, making new relationships with people. Dude, I got you. Good job, Arch. <laughs> you got you every game. That baseball brings people together from people who live far away, so that's my favorite part, definitely. I want to win this so bad. I want to be an example. I want to set an example for everybody. I want to set an example for maybe the little ones who look up to me. No one can ever tell if you're struggling or doing well, and that's the best part of it. If you are always staying positive, have the same attitude, it's going to start clicking sometime. And if you're not down about it, you won't really fall into that bad of a slump. And even if you are in a slump, no one should ever be able to tell. And if that, if you do that, baseball will still be fun, and you'll love to play, and things will start working out for you. Elite on three, elite on three, one, two, three, elite! Yeah, it's nice. I choose this ladder because it's more comfortable, softer. Some people want like hard glove, like infills. I want my glove to be soft, you know, move around it. You have to run long distance, so that's why I choose it. And the colors, pay attention, you know, who we'll pay everything. People will look at it. Even if you're in China, they will look at that, these colors. And the letters I was saying, Soila, my mom, Elanio, my dad, and W, my grandparents. That's why I choose these letters. And Mario, you know, awesome. Super Mario. <laughs> I want to thank Perfect Game for the opportunity they gave me in the PG All-American and Rollins to give me this glove. I'm really grateful for it. Hola, mi nombre es Mario Zavala y juego por San Francisco Giant Scout Team. Ya está mi guante. Uh, this is my first time ever seeing him throw. His location was unbelievable. Uh, 
I saw him, he's a, he's a smaller guy, has a really big mound presence. He paints the corners, he's throwing fastball below the knees. He's got a good curveball, he's got a good changeup, he's got a good fastball. He's consistent, consistency. And he's got that little toad step thing he does in his windup, messing with our timing. You know, he's kind of like me in a way. Yeah, I'm excited to see where he goes for sure. I'm Miles Garrett, and I'm playing with MLB Breakthrough Series. Oh, <laughs> Jupiter has taught me how how many good players there are in baseball, and how lucky we are to have the opportunity to play against each other here. On my fastball, two seam, four seam, running a lot, and that helped me set up my other pitches. So like, I was locating it and messing with the hitter's timing. They don't like that. As a pitcher, I I don't want guys to score based off my walks. It's just a mind game, to be honest. You know, I'm thinking through, like, what is he thinking I'm going to throw? And I kind of try and manipulate that and, and switch it up on him. Just learning to understand the game. You know, it's it's not as simple as just get two strikes, throw a slider, just stuff like that. You know, knowing the game, knowing what to throw and what count. It's, it's, it's been cool to grow in that aspect and uh, just learn how to pitch more than just throw. So. This summer really helped me develop a good pitch calling system because I learned, like, you know, I made mistakes on some pitches. If I like it and my catcher doesn't, or vice versa, then he'll let me know, I'll let him know. It's just kind of a communication piece on that. So we work really hard to get here. It's just a great opportunity. You're not used to travel ball being this competitive. You know, playing guys like this is unbelievable. I can't ask for a better experience. No matter where you are, no matter how many people are watching, no matter who you're in front of, no matter who you're facing, you got to bring your A game. You got to bring your A game. You got to show out and you got to have fun. You can't be stressed when you're playing, you gotta be loose. That's why I love playing with these guys. You know, I'm loose around them. We come in here, joke around, get on the field, take care of business. That's what you gotta do. I mean, these are the best players around, and it doesn't get any better than this. Many of these young athletes may not remember the incredible career of Roberto Alomar, the 10 gold gloves, the Hall of Fame career in the end, and the ballerina around the bag. He was so incredible to watch. Here's what they do know, though. Roberto Alomar finds it very important to give back to the game and to give back in his home country of Puerto Rico. I had a chance to have a conversation with Roberto Alomar out at that yard where they were working. But also, let's start things with longtime major leaguer Luis Alicea as he has a conversation with Justin Colon and Espanol. Justin, caballete, saludo, Gracias. placer de conocerte. ¿Qué opinas de la experiencia que has tenido en este momento aquí en el torneo del Perfect Game? Una experiencia muy grande porque Roberto Lomar nos brindó estar aquí. No tuvimos que pagar nada. Estamos, él está tratando de ponerle el talento de béisbol de Puerto Rico un poco más, a la, más arriba de lo normal. Eh, una experiencia magnífica porque conozco, estoy conociendo nuevos prospectos de, de Puerto Rico que no, nunca he llegado a conocer. Y de, Puerto Rico tiene un futuro grandioso. Me alegro, Gracias, me alegro. Eh. ¿De qué pueblo eres en Puerto Rico? De Carolina. ¿De Carolina? Carolina. Y cuéntame, ¿has tenido la oportunidad de sentarte con Roberto y preguntarle? Porque Roberto es uno de los hilos grandes nuestros sí. en el béisbol y, y una persona muy inteligente. ¿Has tenido sí. la oportunidad de sentarte con él a hablar? Ayer ¿Tengo? mismo, sí, ayer mismo. Uh, cometí un error en el corrido y rápido me llamó el carrito de golf y me estaba explicando qué tenía que hacer y lo que tenía que hacer que todo béisbol es una experiencia, todo es aprender, aprender, porque nadie es perfecto en el béisbol. El béisbol es 100% este, fracasar como tal, para después tener el suceso que uno tiene, como llegar a Grandes Ligas. Hey, vamos, hey, vamos, vamos, vamos. Qué bueno, ¿y dónde estudias ahora? En Mount Birdie Academy. Ah, Mount Birdie, yeah, claro, que yeah. tu inglés está, está bien ahora. Uh -huh, está super. perfecto, qué bueno. Sí. Entonces, ¿cuáles son tus aspiraciones? Llegar a Grandes Ligas, número uno. Quiero que entiendas que tienes que seguir estudiando el deporte. Claro. Eh, tienes tremendo, eres tremendo atleta. Me, me, te, te pude observar ayer jugar y me gustan tus habilidades mucho. Gracias, gracias. Siéntate con Robert lo más que pueda. Trata de, de, de coger cositas de su cerebro, mm -hmm. de, de que te pueda enseñar mucho más.
Oh, got it. Now I remember. All right, so I did the, I don't know, some kind of brown. It was like chocolate. And I did the mint green on the sides. Yeah, I put goose on it. That's what my high school coaches call me. I like that. It's pretty dope. All right, I'm Max Setti. I play for the Florida Burn. This is my new Rollins. Folks, Nate Wolgamuth has been a guy for a long time. Scouts have been talking about him since he just became a teenager at 13 when he was up above 90. Funny thing happened, had a chance to walk with him from field to field and introduce him to Ben Sheets. Longtime major leaguer, great breaking ball, threw hard, who was coaching in this tournament. The two seem similar to one another. What I love most about it was that Ben took Nate away. Similar in height, similar in size, and encouraged him at the highest level. Nate was beaming, but he was also being beaming about a great performance. So let's set the stage. You've got uh, the lights, you've got the scouts, you've got every single eye on you, and that dude is fierce as hell on the mound. Not only pitched the game of his life, pitched a no-hitter in Jupiter. Ah, spoiler alert, it, it was a no-hitter. <laughs> No hitter last night. Pretty amazing, dude. Good what sense. made you think you were able to do that late last night? Consistent. So, it's a big pressure situation. What was going through your mind? It all started just from the start of the game. It just seemed like I showed up to the ballpark. Once I got to the field, it was just locked in. Just threw some music in. Just right then and there, I kind of had the feeling that it was just going to be a good start. Just I felt locked in the entire nice. time. So what kind of mechanics training have you done over the years to uh, be able to generate that kind of power uh, being, you know, almost just under six foot tall. At a young age, it was more of trying to get in my lower half because I've always had a quick arm, but my lower half has always been like the best thing for me. It's been strong. And so just working on getting my back side to fire through and just getting my hips to work quick. If the mound has a hole here in the middle, it's usually where I pitch. The key is tempo. I just think about slowing the game down, slowing my body down and just going through really nice and smooth, getting everything under control. And then when I get out in front, it's effort. It's effort late. On my curveball, it's just how much can I can I get it to bite and how much I'm trying to make the hitter look like he's never hit before. So that's kind of more the key. With my changeup, I'm just thinking in my head, it's a fastball. And I'm just throwing it exactly like a fastball, trying to throw it just as hard as a fastball. And it looks like a fastball and just breaks off. Some people work on getting the hole right. where you can see through. The circle, yeah. But I tend to throw that super hard when I do that. So right. I learned at a young age to choke it off. And that's where I get the, the depth of the drop. And that's why when I throw it to lefties and sometimes to righties, it's it's an effective pitch. When I'm throwing curveballs, when I sometimes when I get here, I kind of cut it off, and those aren't the good ones. When right. I get it and I get it out in front and it flips out, it's more of the 12-6 extension, that I want. getting out front on top and pulling down the front of the ball, right? Yes, sir. Last night I threw uh, quite a few two seams, so I picked a spot on that umpire and I was trying to make it look where this two seam is looks like it's about to hit the lefty, but it really was never, and so they were. You have a good, really good rotation. I watched some video of the game. Uh, really good arm tug down. I work a little bit on putting a ball, maybe a little bit heavier ball in my glove, and then feeling that come through. I'm hitting, stopping, and then it's just kind of like falling off to the side. It really makes a good bite and good 12-6. Well, congratulations. Way to go. Wow. Even better in person. Well, I was trying to make a glove that had some meaning to it, right? I was going to do like for my school, my colors, high school, I got one year left. So I decided to do the Gators, committed there. Um, I don't know, I think the colors really pop on this glove. I mean, look at the blue, look at the orange, the black. Uh, I just something about making this glove. When I saw it all done, I was like, I got to get this. I have, I have one just like this one and I feel comfortable with it. Uh, Heart of the Hide, the guy was telling me the colors show out more in this one, so I went with his gut and turn looks awesome. My name is Kobe Mayo. I'm with the Houston National Scout Team. This is my new baby. Reset, refocus, relax, so what? These are the words written on Ian Mahler's bracelet, the one that he wears every single game. Mahler's a catcher from the 2021 class playing up with the MLB Breakthrough Series team. He comes from humble beginnings that have sparked his big league dreams. I had a chance to catch up with Ian and find out about what makes him tick and why he thinks he's going to be an all-star in just five years. Where I'll be in five years? Yeah. I'll be all-star in the MLB. <laughs> I'm Ian Mahler. I'm playing for MLB Breakthrough Series. 
When I was younger, again, it was just me and my father. And I remember we had a little apartment and we, we had like a, a, like a really bad couch that was worn down. We used to put like a mattress on the couch and we just hit into that. Uh, we never had nothing fancy. Back then, I was, I was like five or six. I thought it was fun. Um, I didn't really understand what my father was doing or what the circumstances we were in. Little stuff like that, uh, I believe, made me who I am. The reason I play for this team is uh, the culture is a lot different. Um, and just the atmosphere is a lot different. Uh, I feel like we play with a different style. We're usually uh, the most hyped team at the tournament, having a lot of fun, making a lot of jokes, but I mean, yeah, we kind of just come up with uh, our, like, our own ways to have fun while playing the game. When I got asked to play for this team, um, I mean, it was amazing. I feel like I'm good. Uh, I help my pitch out a lot. I feel like I'm a team guy. Uh, I always put my defense first, have my pitchers out, I mean. I bring a lot of the presence to the plate. I feel like my, my biggest asset is helping the pitchers out, catching. My favorite player would have to be, uh, I'll say like Ronald Acuna, Javier Baez. Uh, they play with, again, so much swag and so much emotion that I love. It would definitely be my father. He's probably my biggest role model. He works out with me. He raised me to be the way I am today, and he helped me with baseball, everything I learned about baseball and everything. I would think it's important to have a team like this uh, just so we can do. Um, there's a lot of labels on us when we play. Uh, some people think we can't play at all. Uh, I think it's important for kids our age to do this stuff now. So, I mean, younger kids and the uh, really young kids can look up to us and hopefully they followed our lead and hopefully we get uh, more uh, African-American uh, players to come up and play baseball. All right, here we go. Dang, this is nice. I chose an outfielder's glove, one, because I have a lot of first baseman gloves at home that I don't really use. I kind of fell in love with the one I have now. I like the trapeze. Um, just like the pocket to deep pocket. I'm starting to play more outfield. That's why I got it. Just try to get that second position down. Um, black and orange is my high school where the Bulldogs, the back of the Bulldogs. Just, I don't know. I, will, I love it. I love it. Michael Brown, I play for the MLB Breakthrough Series. And this is, this is my new baby. I'm Terrell Johnson, and I play for the San Francisco Giants scout team. And I'm Tamara Johnson, getting to know some of my teammates. I'm Jaden Melendez. I'm Mario Sabala. And I play for the San Francisco Giants scout team. Well, our team is full of a lot of good players. It's amazing the bond we have. The best of the best in the nation. We're full of a few All-Americans right here. Mario Zabala, Tamar Johnson, just naming a few. We have two brothers. The Johnson brothers, the community they have. <laughs> <laughs> I think they know what, what, what they're thinking without talking. <laughs> they are incredible. Tamar is fun to play with. You know, he's a good brother. I just like how he plays with a lot of energy. Tavell is like a big power guy. He's very fun to play with. He's very funny. The connection they have, I kind of compare it to me and MJ. They're really close. You know, like Tamar pushes me when I'm down. He, you know, brings me up when he's down. The competition that we have, that, that would make us like better ball players. We play off like, as brothers here. Like we have the same blood. We compete against each other, but in like a good way. We try to make each other better. What I like about Jaden Melendez, how, how he plays the game. He's a beast. He's a he's a beast. He's a he's a good catcher. You know he's calm. He's controlled. How we manage our team when we get upset or something like that. And like he's actually one of the best hitting catchers like I play with. Yeah. yeah. Mario Zavala is a, a pretty good player. I think what he does on on the field speaks for itself. He's a really good kid. He's an all-around player. He can do everything. He's an animal. He's a freaking nature. Yeah. And I think he has a bright future in the game of baseball. How we work in the dugout, how we play in the field, how we manage when we fail, that's important in baseball. So when people think of black and orange together, it's kind of an intimidation factor. We, we blend together like good players, they think alike, and yeah. I just feel like 
that's we, we bond together like that and our connection is what helped us win the game. It's just like a, a circle. It takes a village. All the chemistry that we have together and that we've played uh, for such a long time together, I think that's one of the main reasons why talent other other than talent, people would be afraid to play us. It's a giant team and together we can do everything. What an incredible 12 months it has been for Connecticut-based Jake DeLeo. A jump in the rankings of about 100 points, a perfect game All-American for his efforts, and now there's draft talk. And what's most fun to be around Jake, who works as hard as anybody in the nation, is he embraces that draft talk. He allows himself to dream that dream. When he threw a mic on, he talked about what his dream is like. Instead of going back to sleep when he hits that snooze button, it's that draft dream that wakes him up and pushes him very hard each and every day. The other thing is honoring his late grandfather, who would be so proud of what he is doing on the baseball field. Jake DeLeo, Norwalk, Connecticut, Avon Old Farms, working hard here in Jupiter. Work for me is defined by probably what you're doing that others aren't doing. The typical baseball player going through school, after school, hitting, lifting, running, throwing, doing extra, doing more than what my opponent's doing. When I start waking up at like 5, 4.30, working out two times a day, hitting like three times a day, all the way to 8 o'clock again at night, that's when I started to see changes at everything in my life. Get a cam, drive them in. The people around me were giving me advice that was going to change me as a person. It wasn't just doing the normal stuff anymore. It was trying to perfect everything, getting 1% better every day to reach the ultimate goal of playing in the big leagues. Uh, I've talked to a bunch of teams. Uh, home visits are going to start probably after Jupiter. Um, I'm probably going to take them up at school. I don't want to wake up at 5. I hear my alarm clock going off. I'm tired, but then I kind of have a ringtone that reminds me of that dream. So I wake up, get up, get everything done. And when I think about that day, I kind of think about being surrounded by people that I love, people that have supported me, people that have got me to where I am today. My grandfather's name was William DeLeo. And ever since a young age, he always had come to all my baseball games, no matter what the circumstances were. He always said that he wanted to live long enough just to see where I'd, where I'd end up playing baseball. So he got to see where I'd go off to college. He didn't get to see what's going to come after that. So every day I kind of wake up and know that he'd want me to be doing this, want me to be working for that goal. Melissa and Michael Romero are the proud parents of Sierra, Sydney, Mikey, and Sophia. Sierra paved the way, playing softball at Michigan for her brother and sisters. She earned National Player of the Year in 2016. She's a three-time Big Ten Player of the Year and four-time All-American. Now she's paying it forward, driving an hour and a half to see her younger brother Mikey play here in Jupiter and see how all their hard work at home has paid off. when he was younger, he would be on YouTube all day, every day, just watching hitters, different hitters, watching defense. Um, I'd always ask him, like, hey, bud, what are you doing? He's like, oh, I'm watching baseball on YouTube. See, he's going to get to hit. Here he goes. Very awesome. It's such an effortless swing, and he has so much power, and it's funny because he can be, totally be fooled, but he still finds a way to put the ball in play. How much do you guys talk hitting? He'll ask me questions about hitting, about defense when I'm home. He'll have me work on drills with him. About a hit in his first at bat. Yep. About the game winner the other night. Yeah. He was texting me about that. No interest in that one up. Nope. Nice cut. He was on that one. Yeah, he's on he it. He was on that one.
a, a good player is always learning. You never have it all figured out. There's always room to improve. And I think that Mikey feels the same way because he's always trying to up his game. He was having trouble with his defense. So I start just rolling him ground balls because I wanted to look at his glove work and his footwork. I was like, dude, you're not moving your feet at all. Like, what are you doing? And I feel like he got kind of caught up in watching the MLB players. Finally, we started doing this like short hop drill where he has to read it. But I told him you have to let it bounce no matter what. But it was just cool because he, he came up to me and we're in the living room. He's like, Okay, I need help. Will you go always some ground balls? And so we worked on it, and he's been doing really well. And that's a 15-year-old with some wisdom right there. Yeah, no, he's You're smart. smart. You he's go ask smart. the people that can help you. He's playing two years up in this tournament. These are all draft guys yeah. for next year. What do you remember about playing up, and how good do you think it is for him? I skipped uh, 16s and went straight to 18s. You have to change your mindset, and you have to play up. If you don't, you're gonna get passed. And so I feel like it, one, it makes him, makes him never settle. He needs to know what it's like to play at the next level, and he needs to make sure he can keep up with them and continue to work hard to be the best that he can be. We all make mistakes. We all long for a second opportunity. To err is human. To throw 98 is not. This, we all hope, is a story of redemption. This is a story of a young man who made the most of his journey to Jupiter. This is the story that we've been looking forward to telling. Good luck to you. Thank you. The story of Mason Wynn. I really think that I had a lot to prove. Uh, I think coming out here and doing what I needed to do, uh, I think it showed a lot, a lot to the scouts, a lot to everybody, all the fans. I just wanted to come out here and play with energy, uh, just back up my teammates, try to be the best teammate I could, and I just I wanted to perform to the best of my abilities. Physically, how did you prepare to get to that point, to touch that number? And you threw effective 98. It wasn't to the backstop every time. What are some of the things that led you physically and some of the training you did to get to that outing? I think just, like you said, the preparation um, all fall. I came back from my arm injury this summer and just trying to prepare myself for uh, to get back on the mound and, and try to throw strikes and not try to, like you said, throw it to the backstop as hard as I could. I really, I wanted to go out there and just throw strikes and just try to get through innings and it just so happened that I, I ran, it, ran it up there a little bit. So I was happy about that, but I was also really happy to get the win. I try to listen and your big bro shared with me that you've been busting it hard on speed. You did have that triple. Tell me specifically what work you put in to increase your speed because it seems like you want to run 60 on the record again too. But tell me what you've done to increase that speed. I, uh, I've been going every Tuesday and Thursday to uh, an NFL guy who, who works with a lot of big guys, a lot of big name dudes around, uh, around Houston. So I've been going to see him, like I said, every Tuesday and Thursday, working on a treadmill and just different drills to try to get, like you said, my 60 and my home to first, stealing bags. I just, I really wanted to work on that aspect of the game as far as as far as far just being the fastest person on the field and just bouncing around everywhere with a lot of intensity. You weren't able to this summer be the teammate you wanted to at a couple of events with Team USA and with Perfect Game at the All-American Classic. There were missteps for you that weren't actually on the field but, but off the field. With that in mind, what did you learn about yourself? How much have you grown because of that? Um, well, I mean, first of all, uh, I did, I made, like, like you said, I made a mistake. Uh, I just wanted to own up to it, learn and grow from it, um, and just try to get it behind me and, and just move forward along with my life and just try to move forward and, and just move in a positive direction. That's how you gain a little knowledge and wisdom. You know, go through it. You now have a little bit more, especially if you move past it, you now have a little bit more knowledge and wisdom than your teammates. You've been through some things, they haven't. And so my final part of that is, I think a lot of people that go through something like that come to come to something like this and do it angry. You didn't do it angry. You, 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 you achieved. There was no, see what I could do. You didn't do it angry. You came here peaceful. I did. I did. I just, like I said, being a teammate is big for me because I love, I love being the dude that's going to pick my teammate up, whether or not I go 0 for 3 or 4 for 4 or if I hit 98 or if I only touch 88. I really like going out there and I like enjoying the game and, and just having fun with it. I really, I like going out there. I don't like playing angry, like you said, because I feel like you do that, you play all tight and jittery. I just like to be loose and have fun with it. Dude, I'm so glad we could have this conversation. Yeah, That's cool amazing. stuff. Congratulations, Thank Steve. you. Thank all you right. so much. Everyone knows it's our last summer game together. 
You're going to see a bunch of guys that love each other, uh, love this game. Every pitch here, every inning we play, every game we play, we've been working for this moment right here. I just think that we're going to show everybody that you know we have the talent along with just playing the game the right way. Friendships we had as teammates, we treated each other like family. It's been my goal to be in this game for four years. Uh, first inning, first at bat. Curveball, ball, and then he put one up and in that I put over the left field fence. So walking up, honestly, first pitch, I was going to try to hit a bomb. But when I got froze up, I thought he was going to throw me a curveball. He threw me a fastball. Oh! Let's go! Yeah! Let's keep it going! Last year, we were supposed to lose every game in our pool. We came out, we won it. I couldn't even imagine coming this far at the beginning of this year, and honestly, not a lot of people had faith in us. How does it feel to be a back-to-back -back champion? Let's go! Amazing. I'm a better person being around all these guys because they're such great people. I've never been on a team with this good of team chemistry. The thing I like the best about it is it's not all showcase. It's we're here to win. I love how we're so close, and we'll remember each other forever.